Believe it or not, my throat really hurts from talking so much during live streams over the weekend. Just goes to show how rarely I string together so many words consecutively. So I'm going to try not to talk so much today and give my vocal cords some time to rest. Enjoy. That, uh, that video is up on Cassie's channel. You should go check it out if you want to learn a little bit more about her. You hungry? Yeah. We're always hungry. I gotta pay rent. Don't tell my landlord I'm sending it out a couple days late. Should make it there on time though. quick breakfast. Gotta find out what hatched from that egg. It was... Wait, what? It's gone. What was it? It's definitely not this level one totodile. I think I know what happened. I transferred some Pokemon right before the egg hatched. I transferred some Pokemon right before the egg hatched and I might have hatched I might have transferred the Pokemon that hatched from the egg, and that's why it froze up on the egg hatching screen. It's because I transferred it. Well, more eggs coming soon. on a Pokestop and got a metal coat, which is super exciting. And tomorrow is my seven day streak, so I should be getting another evolution item, and hopefully it's not another dragon scale. But metal coat, I'm going for scissor for sure. I saw it on sightings and then it disappeared, so I kind of ran over here to get it. 651 might be a little risky with the pineapp berry because, oh, it's still green. But this is definitely the highest CP Mareep that I've encountered so far. And, um, you know, while we're catching these Pokemon out here, there's something I just want to talk about real quickly because it's been bothering me a little bit. 5,000, this is like max level. Thundershock, Thunderbolt, I could even... Is anyone else having this problem where, like, my Pokemon screen freezes up and also all my Pokemon locations disappeared? When did that happen? Could this be shiny? No, didn't think so. So anyway, what I was saying is, obviously some days I'm not going to catch as many Pokemon in a video 
as I am today, and that's just the way it's going to be sometimes. Obviously, there are some people who have a problem with that, and there are those of you who are going to support and watch the videos and enjoy the content, regardless of how much Pokemon Go there actually is in it. So for those of you who enjoy the videos regardless, I just want to ask uh, a favor of you. Whoa, this table is... Yeah. I just want to ask a favor, which is let the haters hate. Don't engage with them. Don't reply to them. Just let them complain that there's no Pokemon Go in the video and leave them alone because it is really demotivating to me to see people fighting over the video, to see people fighting over the content. You know, I could honestly care less if people are complaining that I only caught one Pokemon, but when I see people bickering and arguing, it's, it's just, it doesn't make me feel good. Because honestly, there's enough unnecessary hate and anger in the world as it is, and I don't want something that I'm doing to lead to the creation of more of that negativity, so. So if you see people complaining, just let them complain, leave them alone. Thanks. So I came home to this massive package waiting for me. And instead of waiting till the next mail time video to open it, I gotta do it right now because I've been sitting in this. It's a plastic chair. Low back, it's killing my back. So I gotta, I gotta set this up. Do not cut. How am I supposed to open it then? While I'm working on this though, let's talk about some recently released, recently updated Gym Attackers tier lists. Game Press, Game, Game Press, Game Press just released their new Gym Attackers tier list. And, wow. The tier list takes into account things like, obviously DPS, like I've talked about on my spreadsheets, but also, also things like the metagame, how common defenders are, and how many common defenders each Pokemon is actually useful against. So according to Game Press, Tier 1 attackers are Dragonite with Dragon Breath and Dragon Claw. That's a legacy moveset. But if you don't have that, don't worry because Dragonite with Dragon Tail and Outrage is also tier 1, and that's a moveset that you can still obtain. Also in tier 1, believe it or not, is Blissey with Pound and Hyper Beam. In tier 1.5, we have Tyranitar with Bite and either Stone Edge or Crunch, Vaporeon with Water Gun Hydro Pump, and Machamp with Counter and Dynamic Punch. Tier 2 includes Snorlax with Lake Hyper Beam, Heracross with Counter and Close Combat, Executor with Extra Sensory and Solar Beam, Jolteon, Jolteon with Thundershock Thunderbolt, and Lapras with Frost Breath and either Blizzard or Ice Beam. And then in Tier 2.5, I'm just going to read these to you. In Tier 2.5, you have Espeon with either Zen Headbutt or Confusion and Future Sight. You have Charizard and Flareon with Fire Spin and Overheat. Alakazam with Psycho Cut or Confusion and Future Sight, and Gengar with Shadow Claw and Shadow Ball. And then they list a tier 3 plus with a ton of Pokemon. You have Jinx with Frost Breath Avalanche, Cloyster with Frost Breath or Ice Shard and Avalanche, Arcanine with Fire Fang and Fire Blast or Flamethrower, Vine Whip or Razor Leaf Solar Beam Venusaur, Vine Whip, Rass Knot, Power Whip, Tangela, Dragon Tail Hydro Pump Gyarados, Mud Slap Earthquake or Stone Edge Rhydon, Rock Throw Stone Edge Golem, Water Gun Hydro Pump for Alligator. There's 
there's a lot of them. So I'll just put them up on screen right over here. GamePress also goes on to explain why each Pokemon is placed where they are. And I'll link in the description to the article, their page, with all these explanations on them. But I want to talk about a different sort of tier list. A Redditor named Ryan of the Day posted his own sort of breakdown of the attacking metagame on the Silph Road, and it actually got a lot more upvotes than GamePress's tier list. His attacker recommendations are a little bit more straightforward than GamePress's. He has a Supreme tier, which is Pokemon who deal higher DPS than pretty much everything else and are good in almost any matchup. That's going to be Dragonite with Dragon Tail and Outrage or Hurricane, and also Dragonite with Dragon Breath and Dragon Claw, so similar to Game Press there. In his Supreme tier, you also have Tyranitar with Bite and Stone Edge or Crunch, and Machamp with Counter and Dynamic Punch or Close Combat. And remember, those are Pokemon who are going to deal high DPS to pretty much any Pokemon, and they also have decent defensive stats to back up their damage. In addition to Supreme, there are also Glass Cannons. Glass Cannons are going to be Pokemon with really high DPS, but that don't really have good matchups and kind of lack the defensive survivability that Pokemon in the Supreme tier have. The Glass Cannons are going to be Gengar with any move plus Shadow Ball or Shadow Claw and Sludge Bomb, and also Espeon and Alakazam with any move plus Future Sight. And lastly, Ryan has a tank class that includes Blissey with Pound and Hyper Beam and Snorlax with Lick and Hyper Beam. And remember, those are both Pokemon that have really high defensive stats, but not so much on offense which means they're going to survive in pretty much every matchup, but they're not going to deal damage as fast as the other Pokemon that are listed here. In addition to those, he has a separate sort of class called Goodmons, and these are Pokemon that have specialized matchups that can actually make them better choices than the Supreme tier, but of course only if it's the right matchup. I'm not going to read out all the potential movesets for these good mons, but I'll put it up on screen. Of course, I'll link to this in the description as well. Good mons include Executor, Vaporeon, Heracross, Gyarados, Flareon, Ursaring, Charizard, Golem, a lot of Pokemon from the sort of lower tiers on GamePress's list. And then finally, he has a specialist tier, which is Pokemon that have very specific matchups that they're good in, but aren't generally useful outside of those matchups. Ooh. This is kind of scary. The specialist Pokemon include Jolteon, Cloyster, Tangela, Venusaur, Scissor, Rhydon, Lapras, Houndoom, Magneton, Jinx, and Arcanine. Real quickly, I just want to go over GamePress's Defender tier list, and we'll talk about which of the Pokemon from GamePress's list and Ryan's list have the best matchups against those gym defenders, so you'll know exactly what Pokemon you want to be using those attackers against. Against Blissey, I have a whole video about it, you can check it out here, but the definite recommendation is Machamp with Counter and Dynamic Punch, followed by Machamp or Heracross with Counter and Close Combat. Against Snorlax, again, you definitely want to be using Machamp if you can. You can also use Heracross. And for the most part, anything from Ryan's Supreme category will do well against Snorlax. I'd also sometimes recommend Golem and Rhydon against Snorlax because they're going to deal a decent amount of damage, and they also resist Snorlax's normal type moves like Body Slam and Hyper Beam. Against Tyranitar, again, you really want to use Fighting types because it has a double weakness to fighting, so that's going to be Machamp. Can you see why it's a Tier 1 attacker now? Machamp, Heracross, you can also sometimes use water types if you don't have access to a strong fighting type, if you've already used it up, if it's fainted in the battle against something before that. You can definitely get away with Vaporeon, you can try Gyarados, you can also use grass types. Be careful with Exeggutor because Tyranitar's dark type moves are going to be super effective against it, but you can definitely use Tangela and Venusaur with their best attacking movesets. Against Dragonite, you always, always, always want to be using Ice types, so that's definitely Lapras. Lapras is always going to be your best choice. Cloyster is very good, and then Jinx is sort of 
a glass cannon in that it deals very good DPS, but it has very low defensive stats. Against a Rhydon, you definitely want to be using water or grass types, so Vaporeon is probably your best choice. You can also use Exeggutor with its grass type movesets. Uh, Tangela is going to be good. Be careful with Venusaur though, because its poison type is going to take super effective damage from Rhydon's ground type moves. Against Gyarados, you definitely want to be using electric types. Jolteon is always going to be your best attacker. Magneton is a good choice also. And you can also use rock types here, but rock types are going to take super effective damage from Hydro Pump. And most rock types are also ground types, so they're actually going to take double damage. So. Electric is definitely your best choice. In Game Press's Tier 3 against Vaporeon, you definitely want to be using Electric or Grass. So again, that's Jolteon, Magneton, Venusaur, uh, Tangela, Exeggutor. Against Lapras, Machamp is going to be your best choice. Jolteon's also good. Magneton's good here because it resists Lapras's Ice-type attacks. And, I mean, that really pretty much covers all the main common defenders that you see in gyms in the current metagame. Make sure you familiarize yourself with type advantage if you're not already familiar with it. I'll link to a chart for that in the description also so you can check that out. So if you do ever come up against a Pokemon that you don't know exactly what to use, you can always consult your knowledge of type advantage and just choose your best attacker of that type. Make sure you familiarize yourself with all the Pokemon and movesets on these tier lists because those are the Pokemon that are really going to be worth powering up worth investing Stardust into. And also remember that Niantic is currently working on a gym system rework, which means all this information will probably obsolete and completely outdated whenever that does launch, probably sometime in the next three months. So do what you want with it, invest Stardust now or save it for the rework. Personally, I haven't been battling gyms a whole lot recently, so I'm probably not going to be investing a ton of Stardust into Pokemon. I pretty much have my go-to attackers set already. I have a decent Jolteon, decent Machamp, some good Vaporeons. And honestly, there's not really a whole lot more that I need to be competitive in the current metagame. So, so hopefully you find some use for this information. As always, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate the support. I'll see you tomorrow.